Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be servicing a Mercedes-Benz C180. So this is a W204 model and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing the oil, we're going to be changing the oil filter, we're also going to be changing the pollen filter, so the cabin filter and then I'm not going to change the brake fluid, I know Mercedes recommend you to do it but I'm just going to check it to see if there's any water that's gotten into it so this is just a very simple little test now I haven't got a huge amount of tools to do this I'm not a mechanic but I do service my own cars and it is actually very easy to do the thing that makes this one particularly easy to do is this oil extractor here so I've had the engine running for about 15 minutes just to warm it up a little bit and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this through the dipstick and basically just suck out all the oil change the filter put new oil in and then put the old oil into the container there and then dispose of it down the local tip. Uh, pollen filter here was probably one of the most expensive things. If you just buy online, you can still buy via Mercedes, but it works out so much cheaper. So basically I actually got the oil off eBay, but it is from a proper Mercedes dealer in Newcastle. And it came to, I think it was about 40, 45 pound for that and a filter as well. So you can actually do your servicing very cheaply. So let's get on with it. So to begin with, we just need to pop the bonnet or the hood, as you will know it. If you have a look here, a little catch here that we just need to pull down, like so. And then just need to look under here and you will see that we have a little catch here that we just need to lift up here, like so, and then it will lift up. Now if you want more room these will actually lift all the way up vertical which is a nice little feature. Now, if you're wondering where the oil filter is on this one here this is a small engine this is only a 1.8 but it's actually there where it says turbo that is actually the oil filter there. This is where we're going to be filling up the oil and the dipstick where we're going to be taking out the old oil is there. Now to set up the oil extractor we have to find out what tube will fit down a dipstick hole. So I know on my car it's going to be this one here. So I'm just going to attach this medium one to the large one and then I'm going to start sucking out the oil. If you've got a smaller diameter dipstick hole then obviously you would need to use this smaller one here. Now you want to make sure it goes right the way down so it goes to the bottom of the sump to get all the oil out. It doesn't work on all cars. On this particular Mercedes it works perfectly right down to the bottom. I know my brother's had a Ford Galaxy and he could only get about half the oil out. So you need to you know, know how much oil is in your car. So I know in my car it takes 5.5 litres. Each one of these is a litre. So that's 1 litre, 2 litres, 3 litres, 4 litres, 5 litres. So I know that I should be extracting around about up to here as long as obviously you've got enough oil in your car but you can check that from your dipstick. Right so I'm going to take out the dipstick. I've got an old rag here to keep everything nice and clean. Obviously if you want to check the oil you're going to have to let the engine cool down for a bit so you can get a true reading. Right and we're just going to put that to one side. Now we're getting the tube from the oil extractor and we're going to put it right the way down to the very bottom. There we go, so I, can, I know now that I'm hitting the bottom of it. And now all we have to do is give it a few pumps and the oil will start flying out of it. There you go, you can see here it comes. And I'll show you it filling up in the container now. bit by bit that will fill up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that now to fill up. After another few minutes I will have to give it a few more pumps just to create the, uh, the suction again and hopefully after about 10 minutes or so we should have the five and a half litres out of it. So you can see now we're now at one and a half litres that's been extracted. Now before we go any further what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take off the oil filler cap so it doesn't create like a vacuum. So I'm just going to turn that anti-clockwise, just over half a turn. Right, I'm just going to give it a few more pumps just to speed it up a little bit. Yeah. 
Right, you can now see we're coming up to four litres. Just going to give it some more pumps. You can hear now that it's getting low because you can hear it sounds different. Right, so it's extracted five litres. We're on a flat surface here. It sounds to be empty. When I'm pumping it, I can just hear it like fizzing away. So I don't think there's anything left in it. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to undo the oil filter. So the oil filter is just tucked away here and I just need to turn that counterclockwise just to uh, loosen it off. You will find that it's not very tight at all. So when it comes to tighten it back up again, I'm just gonna do it by hand and then just for the last bit, just nip it up with a spanner. Right, so I've got my spanner now set to the correct amount and I'm just gonna turn it to the left, so counterclockwise. There we go and it's gone already. Now I've got an old rag ready to catch the oil because when I take that out, there will be oil that drips out of it. That should be loose enough for me to do by hand now. It is, so I'm just going to put the spanner down. I'm going to get a bowl to catch the oil as well. Right, so let me just show you it as it comes out. Okay, so I'm just going to pull it out, but I'm not going to pull it all the way out yet. I'm just going to let the oil drain away just to keep everything nice and clean. There we go, and now underneath and into the bowl. There we go. Right now, this is important. You really have to make a note of where the O-rings are because there's loads of different grooves, and if you don't take a picture or write it down on a bit of paper, it's very easy to forget because we've got one here on like the second ring, and then we've got one down the bottom here, and we've also got one here as well. So it's important to make a note of where they all are. Right, let's put this down on the ground so we can get to it now. And now I've got the oil filter out, I'm just giving it some more pumps and you can see that there is more oil coming out now. Okay, so this is going to be a messy part now, there's no real way around this. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to grab the filter and yank it off. You can see if I go downwards it will pull off like so. Okay, so that's the old filter there. Like that now obviously it is messy so make sure you've got a cloth handy to clean up as you go along or just swap your gloves out. So we've got a new filter here. Okay now it doesn't matter which way it goes on and we should have a pack of o-rings as well. Okay so you can see three size o-rings so obviously the big o-ring is going to go up the top, small o-ring at the very bottom and the medium sized one about an inch and a bit up from the bottom. So I'm getting a little screwdriver here and I'm just going to do them one at a time so I don't forget where they are. So I'm starting with a big one and you can see the groove I'm taking out of is this second groove here. Okay. And we're going to put that one on again. There we go, so that's the new O-ring on. You can smear a little bit of oil on it if you want. Right, now we're gonna do the medium size one. So the medium size one is just in there. Right there, that groove there. Okay, so that's that one. And lastly, I'm just going to take the small one off, which is just on the groove at the very end. There we go, okay. Right now I'm going to get the filter, the new filter, and we're just going to slide it on like so. There we go, and you can hear that it will clip into place like that. Right, so remember to give everything a nice clean up now because it's been in a 
a bowl full of the old oil. And now we're just going to put it back in and we're going to do it hand tight to begin with and then we're just going to lift it up. If you do want to use a torque wrench, and you can see there it says 24 newton meters. Alright, so now we're just going to put it back in and we're just going to do it hand tight and make sure you don't cross thread it when you put it back in. So you can see how easy it is turning. I'm not using a bit of force for that very first bit. And now once it grips, you do have to use more force. I'm just going to do it all by hand until the very last bit. Right, so I can't do it anymore by hand now. So I'm going to get my spanner. And this time I've got to go clockwise. Just remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. So now we're going to the right. So that's clockwise. And there you go. I'm happy with that. You heard it. And now I've got a nice bit of resistance on there. Obviously, if you're worried about it, you can borrow yourself or buy yourself a torque wrench and then you can put it up to 24 Newton meters. Okay, so I've given it a few more pumps. Nothing more is coming out now. I can't hear sounds completely empty and if you have a look I've got five litres and about uh, about a fifth so probably about 5.2 litres out of it. I'm going to take this out there we go and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean it all up now and then pop the dipstick back in so I'll pop the dipstick back in now and what I'm going to do is I've got the funnel in here and I'm going to take a, a read in after about 5.2, 5.3 litres. So this is the oil we're going to be using as you can see here this oil is the 229.5 oil so this is the one for petrol engines and this is a 5 litre container and you can see you've got a little guide here at the side to see how much you've got left. Right, so that's that container done and the good thing is I can now pour all the old oil into this to keep everything nice and clean because although it's five litres it does actually take more nearer towards six litres so you'll be able to get all your old oil in here so you can dispose of it properly. So now I've got the one litre container and I'm just going to put in about uh, probably down to about 700 so that's going to be about 300 millilitres. Now I'm going to let that settle down, I'm going to do my checks on my brake fluid and then I'm going to take a, a read in on the dipstick. So we're just going to remove the old funnel and then put the cap back on and just twist it clockwise. Okay, so we're just going to test the brake fluid now, see if uh, there's any water in it. So this is a very simple thing. All it's doing is it's measuring the water content between the two pins and then it will give us a reading up here. Okay, so just tap it and you'll see that the battery is okay. And then depending on the level here, if it's 1% or 2% it's okay, 3 or 4% it's all warming. So we're just going to take off the brake fluid cap. You can see that there's a little gauze here just to keep everything nice and clean. I'm just going to... Right, so now if you look, I'm going to put the probe Turn it on, put the probe in to the fluid down there and if you have a look you can see that we're okay, we're still at 1%. So I'm personally not going to change the brake fluid even though Mercedes do recommend to do it every couple of years. Now be very careful with this because it is very corrosive to the paint. We're just going to put the gauze back in, like that, and then put the back on. Now, check your coolant level while you're here as well, and if you give this container a wobble, you can just see that the level's just up to here, so that's okay. I've already done a video on how to top that stuff up anyway. 
And last thing what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill up the little reservoir for the wipers. Okay, so I've now topped that up, and now I'm gonna check the oil on the dipstick. Yeah, that's good, that's right in the middle there. So if you have a look there, you can see the top of the ridges is the max. So it's between there and there, and if you have a look, the oil is right in the middle. But what I'm gonna do is, because remember, there's no oil at the moment around the oil filter because I haven't started the engine. I am gonna put in another couple of hundred miller litres and that is actually going to bring me up to five and a half litres and then by the time it goes around the oil filter you should find that it's still going to be around halfway on the dipstick there. So I'm just going to put in another couple of hundred millilitres via the funnel again. There we go, now you see the level there is half gone. So that is five and a half litres that's been put back in. Start the engine, let it run through, and then we're going to change the pollen filter, the cabin filter. So as you can see, it's a relatively neat job when you have the oil extractor. Just before you start your engine, make sure the filler cap is back on nice and tight. Make sure your oil dipstick is back in nice and tight, and obviously You've done this up already, but just make sure you're happy that that is done up. And now we're ready to start it up without worrying about oil splashing anywhere. Right, so it all sounds good. So now we're gonna do the pollen filter and then at the end we're gonna do the reset the service interval. And now we just need to grab the bonnet or the hood and just let it drop and then firmly close it like that. Right, it's time to change the pollen filter now. Now you're gonna find this under the glove box. So this is gonna be on the passenger side. Remember this is a UK car, so the steering wheel's on the right hand side, so I'm gonna be working in the left hand footwell. Now I didn't get an official Mercedes one because the first year that I did the pollen filter, which was the first time because the car was relatively new, so it hadn't been changed before. The one I took out had a little Mercedes stamp on it, but it still said man filter. So I'm happy just to put a man filter in. I don't need to pay the extra 15 pounds to put a Mercedes one in. So this is it here now it is fiddly to fit just because there's not a lot of room so what we're gonna to have to do is gonna be hard to film on this but if you have a look uh, excuse the mess I'm gonna do a nice big clean after I do the service but if you have a look I have got a few little uh, holes that I need to get out so you need to do a little torque screw here a torque screw here and also a little torque screw up here as well so basically what I'm gonna be putting in is a uh, torque screw is a T20. Right, okay, so let me put this on a tiny little tripod and try to film it the best I can. Right, and then the whole thing just falls downwards. And if you have a look there, that is where the old pollen filter is. So let me remove this completely. Right, there's an awkward little foot there. Can you see there? You've got to bend that back that way to actually remove this panel, okay? So don't just yank it down. You do need to get your hand up after you've pulled it down and pull this to the side to get it out. Let me remove this for the time being. Right, okay, so what we're gonna do is, you see this white thing here? We need to slide this towards into the car, okay? So it's, uh, there we go, that's it, you see it slid all the way across. And then there's gonna be a little clip here. Can you see this little metal clip here? So I'm just gonna get a little flathead screwdriver and I'm just gonna insert it there and just lever it out. Like that, can you see there? And it just comes off. 
Okay, and if you have a look, it's the uh, that's the way it goes up. So this side goes towards the windscreen, the top of the car, and this is at the bottom. And now I should have another clip on the other side as well. Okay, and that's the back clip off. Okay, so two clips holding it on. And now, there you go. That's the old one. Yeah? Actually looks surprisingly clean. Right, okay. Right, okay, so now we're gonna be putting this in this way, okay, because we need to slide this side back, lock it into place. So push it in like that and then let's get the little clips on again remember that the clips go this way up with that bit facing up towards the windscreen there we go that's one in and again same at the back with the, the vertical bit up towards the windscreen again There we go, and you heard that clip into place, and now we just have to slide this whole thing along. There we go. That's it now. Okay, so what you're doing is you're taking this white thing off the actual filter itself and putting it onto the housing. Uh, but it is very fiddly because you have to be a contortionist to be able to get into it. Right, now all we have to do is put the cover back on and then do up those torque screws again. You can see it's uh, that's what happens. You just keep knuckling yourself on it. Right, so now we need to offer this cover back up to it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting in the, uh, the left-hand side first. So the side away from the... Uh, basically the side towards the door obviously it depends on what country you're in but uh, the side towards the door because I want that bit there to just clip underneath it this thing here needs to clip in first it needs to go under the trim like there we go so you can see now that that bit is under it here now remember this little catch here has to go up into its little home. I'm afraid it's so hard to see, but this thing here needs to go into, you can see that there's a little, uh, you probably can't see it on the camera, but there is a little home for it to go into quite near the back. Yeah, and then you see it will allow everything to just push up into place. So now I just need to do up the torque screws and then that will be all nice and flush again. Again, when you're putting them in, try not to cross thread them. So if you start doing it and it doesn't feel like it's going in nice, just take it out and do it again. Because it wants they want to go in very easy. Right, so that is everything in, again, nice and flush, just like it should be. So what we have to do now is reset the service interval. So now we just need to reset the service interval. So let me show you what happens at the moment when I put the key in. You see it says service A overdrew by 25 days. Well, we don't want that to keep happening. So what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna put the key in and we're just gonna turn it once, that's important. And then we need to hit this button and hold it down, followed by this button and hold it down. So the call answer button and then the okay button. But you need to do this one just a split second first. So this hold it and then using your other hand, press this one and then hold it. And you will see that it will change up here. And that's how we get into the service menu. So I'm gonna hand the camera over here for a minute. So now key in and we're just gonna turn it once. And now I need to get it off this screen here. So you can see at the moment it's telling me how fast I'm going. I'm just going to press up, 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 up until it shows me how many miles I've done. And now I'm going to press this one and hold and press this one and hold. So press and hold, press and hold. Keep them held down for a few seconds. And now you will see if we look closely, it's changed up here now. Yep, and I need to go to where it says Assist Plus. So I'm just going to go down and down and press OK. And now I'm going to go down to Full Service and press OK. And I'm going to go down to Configure Full Service and press OK. 
Now it's asking me what grade oil I use, so I use 229.5 and press OK and it says oil grade 229.5 service carried out yes or no. Well we did, go down to yes and then press OK and now it says cannot be undone, cancel or confirm. We're going to move down to confirm and then we're just going to press OK. And there you go, it says full service completed. And now if we just press back here, you will now see that when I take the key out and put it back in again, you can now see it doesn't remind me that a service is done. And now we can start the car as normal and it won't keep reminding me. If you want to put it back to the mile so you know how fast you're going, just press up once on the arrow there. So there you go, that is the service done on the Mercedes-Benz. So you can see it is actually quite straightforward to do, especially with that oil extractor. So all I have to do now is empty the oil extractor into the empty can, dispose of it down the local tip, and then that is it, job done. And although you do have to buy that, that's about 50 or 60 pounds, you'll make that back on your very first service. And it might not be a thing to save money, it's just the fact that you have to give your car away for the day to have it serviced. So it's kind of time out of your day. So personally, I like doing the service in my own time and I find it straightforward. The only thing that was hard was that pollen filter, the cabin filter. And it's not that it's hard to do, it's just in a real awkward place. You will find it easier. Remember, I was trying to let the camera see what was going on, so it was in my way constantly. If the camera wasn't there, I would have lied on my back and then I would have been able to do it a lot easier. But the pollen filter is harder to do than the actual service on the car. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more how-to videos. Take care. Bye now.